Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. A big thank you for coming back and picking another of my videos right here on YouTube. So we are smack bang in the middle of the Red Bull Salzburg Rebuild Challenge. We have been going through the seasons. We are now at the 3rd of February 2024. You know what time that is. It's winter transfer update episode. We have gone through into the end of the transfer window let's show you as always the players that have come in and the players that have left and today's episode contains a bit of a big one it's a player that we've been holding on to since the start of the save and we can no longer keep him at the club the only player to leave in the january transfer window was benjamin shushko yes very sadly he has moved on he has gone to Bayern munich they came in and triggered that release clause and we had to say goodbye frantically tried to renew the contract as soon as he knew of the interest he was having none of it 15.5 million pounds was all they had to pay to snap him up and unfortunately benjamin Sheshko has now left the club uh, you can see he's already scored two goals in three games for Bayern munich as well uh four appearances three champions league goals for them also, um, looking at the players then that we have bought to replace him, obviously we had a big hole up front in the middle of our attack, so we needed to go and replace him with strikers. The first player that the scouts recommended was Andre Lucas Goodjohnson, yes, the son of former Chelsea player Ida Goodjohnson. Uh, he's six foot two, so he's a pretty same build as Benjamin Sheshko doesn't have the same raw quality as Sheshko you can see that he scored 33 goals in 63 games for Real Madrid's B team so hopefully that will translate across to uh, first team football he probably isn't going to be the starter because there was another player that we did sign there if you were paying attention at the bottom of the list but I think he has all of the potential to go on and be a starter in the future. Uh, it comes to us, we paid 8.5 million. He's valued at 12.5. Now it's 16 million as the upper bracket. Only 22 years old. As I said, he's six foot two. He has good jumping reach, natural fitness. Stamina is good. Strength is good. The pace and acceleration are maybe a little bit of a concern, but if we can get the ball to him, he might be a bit of a fox in the box or one of those with 14 heading that can just be poaching goals from crosses. He also is quite good at penalties. I think for a player who we are looking to develop and move forwards into the future with, he is going to be sound as a signing. The other player that we signed, uh, let's not skip one. We're gonna we signed Marcos Leonardo. He's another player who can play up top. Finishing a 15, 20 years old, five foot seven, so a different striker to Sheshko, but can also play wide left, so that versatility is there that we always look for in the save. Uh, looking at his stats, he's got pace, he's got acceleration, he's got composure, decisions. Determination of seven is probably not that great, but Marcus Leonardo is a player who comes to us with a big reputation in real life. So hopefully if he can replicate that in game, we aren't going to have too many problems. He is a tricky player with dribbling of 11, finishing of 15, first touch of 13. And for the price that we paid of around 11 million pounds, I think that he is going to be an absolute steal. I think going forwards, he will be a player that can help the team no end. Uh, the next player that we signed, and we did put a big, big outlay on this one, is Dane Scarlett. He's a player, again, with a massive reputation in Football Manager as a wonder kid. He's a player that played for Sunderland out on loan from Tottenham. He scored goals in League One. He scored a goal for Tottenham in the 15 appearances that he was there. We know the potential is there. He is 19 years old, and I think as a player to come in and replace Sheshko, he's probably going to find it a little bit tough in the first few months. But once he gets up and running, I think he is a player that is going to fit the mould of what we do. He will also be a player that will score goals for fun. Uh, looking at his stats, pace of 15, acceleration 15, agility 15. In terms of technicals, finishing is 15, dribbling of 13, first touch of 12, heading of 13, penalties of 14, technique 14. So a player in his position who is going to thrive once he gets going and those stats fully develop. Like I said, at 19 years old. He has a bit of developing to do. You can see he has a five-star potential ability uh, in terms of aggression, anticipation, decision-making, determination, flair, off the ball, work rate. It's all there. Basically, we have gone out and signed the player that we think will be the striker for the rest of the save. 
in Dane Scarlett. So those are the players that have come in and gone out. There was quite a hefty outlay after losing Sheshko for £15.5 million, but I think we have spent wisely. All three players that have come in will play a role in the season, I am sure. So let's have a look at how we are getting on on the 3rd of February 2024. As always, have a quick look at the competitions tab and then we will run through the other sections of the club before coming back and having a look in depth. And you can see that we are flying in the Bundesliga. We haven't lost a single game yet. We have played 18, won 16, drew 2, not lost. 51 goal difference and 50 points on the board. In the Champions League, we have reached the first knockout round and we will be playing off against Bayer Leverkusen and we are in the quarterfinals of the OFB Cup playing against SV Reed. So, as I said, let's go away from this. Let's have a look at how the club is standing and then come back, run through the schedule and the stats for the league. So, the finances at the club, there is £36.8 million in the bank. Of that, we have a £16.7 million transfer budget still available to us. There were potential signings that we couldn't get over the line. There were players that we were looking at that we could have strengthened with. But I decided in the long term, we're going to make the wage budget comfortable. £829,000 and only 808 of that is being spent. Uh, but going forwards, I don't want it to be that there's never any money in the bank. So we held on to a little bit. And hopefully going forwards, we will sign just one or two players to start fitting uh, gaps and filling holes that we need in terms of developing the squad, making it that Champions League quality squad and hopefully just the players that will propel us to the next level time and time again. In terms of the club vision then, how are we performing there? So we're very secure in our job role. They still want us to develop players using the club's youth system, sign Ghanaian and Malian players. That is difficult considering where we want to go as a save and where they want to go as a club. They are very different things we're struggling to meet those two but you can't win them all they want to play high tempo pressing football play possession football play entertaining football and do not sign players over the age of 28 so we are hitting all of those apart from the two country signings uh, the five-year plan going forwards work within the wage budget we're on course sign young players to develop for a profit satisfied i think that will come further down the line and minimum two-year contracts of first team players we do that anyway Going forwards to the end of the season then. So they wanted us to be competitive in the Champions League. We've reached the knockout rounds. I think we are doing that. The Bundesliga, they want to win it. No problems there. We are currently 16 points clear going into the second half of the season. I think we are going to win it at a canter. And they want us to win the OFB Cup. So we are still in that in the quarterfinals. And that is achievable. Uh, going forwards though, they want to win a domestic cup. Continue to win the Bundesliga going forwards. And then we want to have a contract renewal to go on. So then let's go back to that competitions tab and show you what's been happening in the Bundesliga. You can see the full table there. 18 played, 16 won, 2 drawn, no losses, 51 goal difference and 50 points. Uh, we are well clear of Rapid Vienna. Uh, Reid are even further back. I think this is getting to the point now where obviously we had Sheshko banging goals for fun. If either of our three targets that we signed hit and they continue to score goals, we are just going to continue to be the class of the league. And this league basically doesn't have the strength and depth to be able to provide us too much competition. And we will be looking outside of Austria in terms of success. If we have a look at the player's stats then for the season, you can see that Benjamin Sheshko leads the way with 14 goals. But we also have Okafor, Gilmore, Cherky and Seavold on that list. Uh, scoring quite a few goals, so we are sharing the goals around. In terms of assists, Okafor with 11, Cherky with 7, Bernardo with 4. We have most shots. Cavacina is leading the way there. Benjamin Sheshko was on the list with 57, Okafor with 47, uh, Sivold with 40, and Cherky with 40. Most player with the match awards goes to Okafor with 5. We have Ryan Cherky with 3. And we also have Omar Sole with three. In terms of most passes, Ryan Shirky, 66. Okafor, 65. Billy Gilmore, 64. Pass completions, not really important, but it is there anyway. Most tackles won. Mark Shinko leads the way in that category. And we have Max Wobel with 44. Most dribbles made. Uh, I don't think we have anybody on that list. Yeah, even though we play with two wingers, we have them cut inside. So not really dribbling on the outside. In terms of most clean sheets, Joe Bursic doing his thing in goal. 12 clean sheets from 18 appearances. 
and in terms of fewest conceded obviously Joe Bursic has probably the defence of the competition in front of him so he has only conceded seven goals in 18 appearances which is why our goal difference is also so fantastic looking then at the other stats so Woba is two from three with penalties uh, Sole 196 clearances so he is really good in terms of protecting Bursic Bursic himself leads the way in terms of team goals somehow 58 Billy Gilmore 55 goals per 90 minutes goes to Sheshko with 1.10 games won Bursic and Seabold with 16 and 15 average minutes per goal 81.64 for Sheshko yellow cards Timothy Pembele with 6 and Noah Okafor 2.6 for fouled per 90 minutes so we are really flying in the league there's not a lot really that we can say there if we have a look at the schedule from where we left off yesterday and just quickly run through that because as you can see there is not a lot really to talk about we start off here in september so we had the 3-0 win against rapid vienna we beat wolfsburg a 3-1 we then beat hoffenheim 4-1 in the champions league group d also nico sole havel and isaac johansson uh, sturmgratz 2-0 in the bundesliga Pregarten 5-0 in the second round of the OFB Cup. Uh, we beat Austria Vienna 3-0 in the Bundesliga. We beat Inter 4-0 in the Champions League Group D. Goals from Sheshko, Sucic and Cherky. Uh, a 0-0 draw against Wacker Modling before a 2-1 victory against Tyrol. We then had a 2-2 draw against Real Madrid in a really good game where Omar Sole was on great form. Two goals for him. Karim Benzema also scoring twice. We then played Klagenfer in the league and beat them 4-1. We played them in the cup and beat them 5-1 before we beat LAS, uh, LASK when I put my teeth back in uh, to kick off November. We beat them 6-1 with goals from Okafor, Sole, Gilmore, Seavold and Sheshko. We then had a 2-1 loss in the away leg of or the away game of the Champions League Group D uh, against Real Madrid. Bernardo getting sent off in the first half didn't help us. We actually took the lead in that game but Papetti scoring an own goal to give them the three points uh, Reed we beat them a 3-0 in the league we beat Hartberg 3-0 in the league we beat Inter 2-1 in the group stage of the Champions League goals from Sheshko and Sandri we beat Altach 4-0 in the Bundesliga a 3-3 draw against Hoffenheim it was a crazy game with goals from Melkerson, Johansson and Schirke we beat Rapid Vienna no we drew 2-2 with Rapid Vienna sorry we beat Wolfsburg a 3-0 in the Bundesliga and then we are currently up to date there. We have a few friendlies before we get back into league action. And then we get into the group stage for the championship group stage to win the league. Uh, in terms of the Champions League, we've just gone through that. You could see how we got to the first knockout rounds. Uh, played by Leverkusen, that game should be a good game. Leverkusen play good football in Football Manager, so we should give them a good test as they should with us and as i said we have reed in the ofb cup so that brings us up to date with everything that is going on in terms of the competitions the last thing to look at then is the squad and the assistant report to see what our best 11 is according to our assistant manager so our assistant manager currently thinks that bursic bernardo woba sole pembele are the best at the back Seavold, johansson Gilmore are the best three midfielders, but Tyler Morton probably should be in there because he's balling out in this league. Okafor wide left, Zabayos wide right, and Marcos Leonardo up top. So, uh, Dane Scarlett definitely will be imposing himself on the league. I think Okafor could probably play on the right, and then we could have Marcos Leonardo on the left. So, we have different options. As I said, with the versatility of some of the players that we go out and sign, it's for this exact reason. So, they could play wide left, could play wide right, could play up top. We always have options to rotate especially with being in the Bundesliga, the Champions League Cup competitions. We want to make sure that we really have all the options available to us. Right then, that is going to wrap this episode up. As I said, we are at the 3rd of February 2024 in today's episode. That means in tomorrow's episode, we are going to jump to around the 1st or 2nd of June, depending on whether we're in the Champions League final or not. Um, going to jump to the end of the season, see if we can keep up the pace in the Bundesliga. As I said, see if we can take the step in the Champions League. Also, we will show you how we get on in the cup competitions. No transfers in tomorrow's episode, obviously, because it's an end-of-season episode, but it's still well worth the watch. Finally, if you're still here at this point of the video, still listening to me talk, firstly, thank you very much. I really appreciate every single person that does that. If you could drop a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button with the notica notifications bell so you never miss another episode. That would be fantastic 
add to but for this one i'm going to wrap it there go check another video out on the channel there is a little something for everybody and i will see you soon